published poets. Um, his poet, his collection Happy, has just been released. You can actually buy that in Waterstones on Amazon. They should read buy on Amazon because of their tax thing. So yeah, you should go to Waterstones. Um, we can buy from him tonight, and it is the wonderful Clive Osmond. I'm going to try and fit four in, two of them are very short, so if I go over time, just throw something at me and I'll, uh, I'll scarf that. Um, I managed to leave them all at home as well, so um, I'm reading on my phone, so I hope the other side stands up to it. None of them are in the book, which I'm not plugging at all, um, So The first one uh, is actually the beginning of a much longer poem, it's going to be a book length poem, or that, that's the intention anyway, but it does stand alone as a poem, and it's called Bonds. Sam swelled with pride the day she arrived, a tiny bundle with her mother's eyes to change his life, shift his focus from himself to this miraculous slice of boundless wealth. No one more surprised at the transformation of the shape his world would take as he sampled the delights of a newborn child. This was something unexpected, new adventures to be enacted and a lifestyle unforeseen. A clean break from a troubled past, a golden chance to atone at last for the corridor of pain, forever encasing the family name. This was fresh, the intense heat of a human week, fanned with dreams and expectations, renewed relations with hope and aspirations. Things were going to be different now. This beautiful gift, a magic wand already conjuring incredible bonds, creating stepping stones to future days when she would have it so much better in innumerable ways than it had ever been for him. As he followed the language of love to the letter, letting Olivia Victoria's existence be his sole reason for living. So, that's the first one. Uh, second one, bit that. Um, it was actually published recently in a journal called uh, Strange Poetry. Um, which is actually based in Swindon, where I live, so it um, wasn't paid for that money. Um, but it's called Technique. There has to be a metaphor to turn this bucket of rotting fish into meaningful art. But oh, fuck it, I can't think of one. <laughs> Part of me says poetic people persist in placing far too much emphasis on technique, all meaning obliterated as words are alliterated, assonance arrogantly blasted out by people with no confidence in consonants producing puerile nonsense verse. So my work will sit on love, like Donald Trump at a women's institute meal in a Mexican restaurant, as the curse of worthless shite haunts everything I write. Proper poetry perplexes me, doggerel relaxes me, sets me free, and the crown of clueless clown is my property. Just don't ask me to explain simile. It's like a billow of smoke drifting down a chimney. <laughs> It's a lot more serious. It's, it's um, actually it's a new poem, uh, but based on a relationship a long time ago. And I tell myself I've got no great problems. I haven't. So I'm still writing poems about it. So um, and it's called Fading. I heard the gossip in sly whispers, amplified a multitude of times to bang the drums of doubt, which are never far away, never have been. So I learned to play a game of hide and seek with life where the only truth I really saw was a version that I liked. It served a purpose for several years, but then it all came home to roost, brandishing its proof like medals as I backpedalled on my beliefs and turned to face the worst. So now I know how much I'm worth, listing my assets and had them assessed by the experts of new circumstance. They use no clever words, just cut to the chase and base it all on facts. No sparing of my feelings, no bullshit to soften the impact of them revealing what I really should have known from the lengthy spells spent pondering alone. Everything I value was fake. Maintaining the presence, maintaining the pretense in order to just take the care lavished on the real thing, the genuine item I thought in my obsession I had in my possession. So, as so often in my life, there's something missing. Emotionally, I have no cot to piss in, and the dreams I've been kissing are fading quickly in the light. Part of me wants them revived, to tell me everything's all right. I'll disbelieve the experts, if you like, but in reality, I know this pain in which I writhe. It's not a stranger by my side. 
the nothing I own before has multiplied. Bread like vermin until it has no place to hide. I suffocate like the air I breathe was always full of lies. And there's nothing I can do but realise how forgery is cut as keenly as real knives when it's time to take a blade to what we fantasise. really silly, you know, I always like to try and make people laugh, I don't know what succeed, but I do try. Um, and the poet I know in Denton uh, calls all his poems, poem, uh, his name is Robert Garner, he's brilliant, if ever you, you know, want to buy a book that's not mine, buy Robert Garner. <laughs> uh, uh, but I decided, yeah, let's call, one. and I decided to call all mine, this pile of shite. But unfortunately, the, I put it in the computer the next morning, and it was like, Try to say now, it's like this pile of shite already exists. So, <laughs> obviously, I'm a plagiarist as well, but, um, but this was the poem. My dad was a multi millionaire. More money than Trump, more ridiculous hair. But he didn't care for wealth and gave it all away. He had his health and plenty of hairspray and no trace of halitosis or tooth decay. My mum was an alien or superhuman who actually shat gold sovereigns. We were always hovering around the toilet to clean up when she had diarrhoea. We plunged in our hands without any fear until the time she ate some dodgy prawns and we were up to our elbows in the devil's spawn. But no matter, at least I have the biggest dong on the planet. Even porn producers tried to ban it. I speak 37 languages including Spanish. I'm six foot four with a jaw of granite. I am the object of desire, and oh yeah, my pants are on fire. Thank you.